All right, that was the Fia Fia Minji Clean Reverse song. Uh, I'll be joining now by Dr. Godon from University uh, University in South Africa. Good morning, Dr. Godon. Good morning, good morning. And um, thank you for having me and, and thank you. Yeah, welcome to everybody. Okay. <laughs> okay, so earlier I was telling the listener or oh, we talking about... Um, migratory fish and um, we got to the different types of migratory fish before we delve into rivers in africa i'd like to ask a question why do fishes migrate ah good good question so i think the easiest way to to answer that is that you know all all the animals that use rivers wetlands ecosystems and the terrestrial environment have have developed abilities to optimize the use of those environments. So they want to use it to the best of their ability. And some species that have the ability to migrate often have an advantage because they can move from one place to another and, and not compete with each other. So often migrations are for, we often refer to them as spawning migrations where many of the, the labios, mudfishes, the cyprinids that we have in Africa, they will move up rivers and they will go and breed in upper parts of rivers so that their babies, when their babies start to grow, their babies are not competing with the adults. So they're trying to improve their ability to survive by not competing with themselves. So they go put their babies somewhere else and then those babies don't compete with the adults and then the adults come back. Sometimes other species migrate simply because they need to find mates, so they don't know where to find each other. So they know that if they all go upstream, eventually they're going to find each other, and that's what the tiger fishes do. And um, other species migrate to find food or to follow food, for example. So there are many reasons why fish migrate, but ultimately it in increases their ability of the population to survive. Oh, brilliant. Increases the uh, ability of the populations to survive, yes, because we've been experiencing a lot of um, extinction and reduction in stock in the wild. Uh, just a few persons these days understand aquaculture. Okay, so could you tell us some of the barriers um, fish migration? Yeah, so, you know, when we think of barriers, we think of hard structures like dams, and it's true that. In, in, in most of the world, including Africa, we have built many, many, many dams. And those dams and the walls of the dams act as, mig act as migration barriers for fish who are trying to move upstream. But, and, and they do affect migrations. But that's not all the type of barriers that you find. Many barriers are um, pollution uh, driven. For example, if you pollute a river, you will mm. cause a barrier. Fish will not be able to move into that pollution area and pass the uh, pollution. Excuse me. Other impacts can be things like um, sudden changes in temperature. And, and we're also noticing that if you, if you change the flows in rivers at the wrong time of year, it becomes a barrier to, to migrations. Um, and then ultimately, um, people ourselves, you know, when, we, when there are lots of us in urban areas, fish that used to swim up those rivers don't no longer want to swim up those rivers because there's lots of disturbances. So there are many types of barriers. They can be physical barriers, it can be chemical barriers, it can be disturbance to wildlife barriers, for example. Wow. Interesting. I just learned that one, um, you know, uh, changing temperature at the time. Uh, yes. Okay, so um, what can we do? What are some of the solutions on the part of humans? Of course, um, we know that there could be natural barriers as well. There are natural disasters that we may not be able to control, but what can humans do on our part? Because we cause most of these barriers. What can we do? What are the solutions to barriers to fish migration? I think, I think the, the most important thing to mention there is that the environment is very resilient. It's very okay. resilient. So we, we, we know that if we give the environment and the rivers and the fish chance to start migrate again, they will. So we need to help them. We need to give them opportunities to start migrating again. Um, by the way, we also we know that and we, we, we manage rivers not only for the environment but for people. So we want to try and support livelihoods of communities, which often means that if you want to increase fisheries, you know, you've mentioned that we've lost a lot of our fish stocks. Um, if we want to increase our fish stocks, we need to start 
trying to improve the ability of species to migrate again. And, um, and something we can do very simply is, first of all, give them the environment that they need to survive in. So we need to think about where are they, how much of an environment do they have, and how can we start to increase that, home, that range where the fish live. And um, where, where species have a, 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 an important need to migrate and they're starting to decline and, and the populations are, are, are dwindling because of barriers, there are many uh, mitigation measures, many strategies that we can adopt to help them migrate. Um, you may have heard of swimways, fishways, that can help fish bypass these barriers and even very high barriers. People think that if the barriers are very high, then we can't build fishways. Well, people are building fish lifts now. So you can lift the fish up, right up a huge tower into the top dam. And or what we find in Southern Africa is that we're so desperate to help our eels, our anguillid eels migrate, that we actually can go and catch them below the barrier and we can just put them on, on top. So we know that here we, they migrate for over a certain period of time and we have an opportunity here to go for that six week period and just employ people for six weeks and to move the small fishes over the barriers so that they can then migrate up the rest of the rivers. So there's many things that people can do, many things. Wow, thank you for mentioning Swimway Africa. I, 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 I really hope I can see one Swimway and see how it works and see these fishes actually going over and the high lakes as well. Interesting. Okay, so could you tell us about the conservation efforts in Africa and um, highlight some of the pollution that uh, man creates and the impacts on this um, migratory? What, have, what has been your experiences and challenges thus far? Okay, wow, that's, thank you. Um, so I, I am based in South Africa. I grew up in Zimbabwe. So I've, um, I've known the Zambezi and Southern African ecosystem, river ecosystems, quite well. That's where the majority of my experience is. But I've also had opportunity to work in the Congo Basin, in the upper Barney River, um, Niger, Niger, inner Niger Delta, and the oh. Nile catchment. So I've had, I've had great opportunity to look at diverse ecosystems and importantly river ecosystems from a fish perspective across Africa. Um, we, we, have a, we have a wonderful diversity of species. And in fact, we still don't know um, many of the fishes that we have in many of these systems. We're still discovering new species all the time. Um, and even before we get the chance to discover what these species are and where they are and what we can do with them and how important it is for them in the environment, we are affecting a lot of these rivers and these fishes with pollution, with barriers, as we've mentioned before, flow changes, flow alterations. So we're starting to, to, to talk, and I think that's the most important thing, is that Across the whole continent, we're talking about sustainability. We're talking about how do we, how can we change the environment and use it for the, for people because that's you know people need water and people need water for food to produce food. But how can we change the environment? How can we develop our resources without seriously harming the environment? Because we will we need the environment and the and and the environment depends on us. So what we're starting to do is we're starting to look for balances. Where can you do certain things? Where can you and where can't you? Where can you, um, um, where can we um, build dams and where shouldn't we build dams? And if we build dams, how can we build dams in a way that can minimize the effect on the environment? Um, we're also looking at things like trying to manage uh, water quality pollution. We're trying to help educate communities about um, uh, not only pollution, but water diseases so that we can not only help the environment, that we can help people as well. So there's lots of work that we're doing across the continent, and um, there's lots of work to be done across the continent. And I think it's a very sad story that we are documenting the collapse of fisheries and the, the extinction of species across the continent because of many things, including alien invasive species, for example. But there's a lot that we can do, and I think this is the first great step, is that we start to talk about these things and we start to work on these things and um, and help each other because we're making we're making good um, successes in some parts of the of the continent. The rest of the continent can can learn from that, and we can help each other. Okay. Okay. So we started talking. Um, it's, uh, I think we need to take the notch higher to um, act. You know, take action. 
for our viewers. And um, so uh, could you tell us a bit more about Swimwear Africa? What can we do? Uh, what do you need? Mm. Oh, thank you. And and that's the best, that's the best thing that I think we could ever, you know, people think we need lots of money and people think we need lots of specialists. This is what we need. We need people all over the continent to start to think that fish and these resources are important. Because if, if, if Africans, if we all start to talk about the importance of our rivers and our ecosystems, that's the first step to start to look after them. You know, until, until we really all believe that they're important and that we want to look after them, we won't. So that, I think, is the most important, important um, opportunity that you have given us. So Swimwear Africa is a, um, a program. It's, a, it's an initiative um, from some um, African specialists. We have specialists and um, stakeholders from throughout the continent who are trying to come together now to start to talk about the importance of migrations. Um, what do they do for us? What are the consequences of disruptions in migrations? What is the rest of the world doing and what can we learn? How can we learn from the rest of the world so that we can keep we can keep these processes going? And what Swimwear Africa is doing is trying to bring people together to talk about fish and rivers and people. So um, what we need from you is to join the conversation and to um, take every opportunity to talk about these fishes and and learn about them. Um, you know, where you guys are in, in, in northern part and eastern part of, of Africa, throughout the central part of Africa as well, there may be many hundreds different hundreds of different types of species of fishes. Not not ten or twenty, but hundreds and hundreds of species. And of those hundreds and hundreds of species, you know, the majority of them migrate, probably migrate. So there's a lot of, of wonderful information out there and um and, and we can do a lot about it. So I just wanted to add, by the way, is that, you know, what people don't re often realize, a lot of people on the ground realize this, but we don't talk about this enough, is that, you know, Africa has these, these food production cycles. We grow crop, and the crop is produced, we eat the crops, and then we wait for the next crop to come. Fish often migrate at the beginning of rainy seasons. And at the beginning mm -hmm. of rainy seasons is usually when we are planting again, and we've eaten all the food that we've collected from last year. So historically, and even today in many areas, migrating fishes fill in that food gap when we are planting again and we have the scarcity of food. So we're really trying to encourage people to realize that, that looking after migrating fishes is actually just looking after ourselves. Hello? Mm -hmm. Sorry, I, I think you I lost. Okay, okay, we're back. Yes, we're, there. we're back on. Okay, great. So I don't know how much of that you you got or you didn't get. Okay, so you you were talking about um, people taking joining the movement basically, and a rainy season when we start planting again is when fishes migrate. Exactly. So when people start planting, fishes are migrating. And that's when people often don't have food because they've eaten all of the crops that they've had from last year because they're starting to plant. So fish often fill in that vital gap for, for, for communities who need food to carry them over into the next period where they've got grain again. So I think we should really start to realize that these migrating fishes are a part of our agricultural systems, a part of our systems, a part of our lives. Mm. Thank you so much, Dr. Good. And I think I just learned something really interesting and pretty new, um, talking about um, planting season, rainy season, and when fishes start migrating. You know, because a lot of people are waiting on the next crop, and there's um, less food, uh, less food crops there is. So um, if we could help and reduce the barriers we create or we impose on this migratory fish, then we could have fish all around the year to support the food crops when they are all available. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. And talk about it. Talk about it. Talk about it. Talk about it. <laughs> of course, we keep talking about it and then we'll act. We'll take action for our viewers. We'll not just be talking this time. We will take even, action. Even if you little things, if you see fish at a barrier who can't get over, help them. Catch them and put them on top. Don't eat everything. Oh. Catch them and put them on top. I hope we get to that level and we don't catch it and put in our soup pots. <laughs> yeah, little bits. 50-50, hey? Yes. 
Okay, thank you so much, Godon. It's been an um, inspiring, um, inspirational moment with you. I just, I learned, I mean, I'm a precious graduate, but I keep learning every day, and you just taught me a lot this morning, and I think my listener has learned a lot as well. So thank you so much. I guess Great we'll pleasure. keep in touch. Great thank pleasure. you so much. Please do. Okay, guys, so thanks very much. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. All right, um, I think you learned something, uh, plants in season, uh, when um, we uh, start planting.